Hi, first graders. You made it back for the third video of the week. Nice job. Give yourself a high five for coming back. I'm so excited that you're here. Let's keep learning about our books and doing what good readers do. So if you remember on the last video, we started talking about text features and we started exploring them and talking about what they teach us. Do you remember any of the text features that we talked about in the last video? Right now, I want you to say them out loud and count on your fingers. How many text features can you remember that we talked about? How many did you come up with? We talked about four so far. Do you remember them? We talked about glossary, index, caption, and diagram. And we learned that these are all really helpful for helping us learn more information. So we were learning information from text features. Well, there are more than just four text features. There are a few others. So I made a chart of text features that we are going to talk about together. So there, we see some of them that we've talked about, but you might see some that we haven't talked about yet either. So we've got the glossary, keywords, ooh, we'll talk more about keywords, index, table of contents, captions, and diagrams. So I wanted to go through each one of these and I'm gonna have you answer out loud. How does that text feature help you learn information? All right, so we're gonna go each one. And I'm gonna kind of show you in a book to give you, to help you remind, remind you about that text feature. So starting with the glossary. So here, remember we had the glossary, right? So the glossary was like that mini dictionary that is specific words that are in that text. So here's your turn. How does the glossary help you as a reader? Go. How does it help you? Well, if you don't have a word that you don't know what it means, glossary, right? The glossary tells you those words that you don't know what they mean. Super helpful, because you can't learn information if you don't know what the words are. So that's a great one. Let's go on to the next one. We haven't talked about this one as much, but I know you've seen it. Keywords. Now a keyword, this book has them. Keywords are words that maybe look a little bit different. We talked about this one. Remember we had theropod, and it's written in different print. Can you see that? It's like darker, right? This is in black and the rest is kind of on this green color. A keyword tells you like, hey reader, this is an important word, pay attention to this word. So a keyword a lot of times shows up in what they call bold, which means extra dark, thick letters, and tells you, hey reader, definitely pay attention to that word. So lots of nonfiction books have key words. So, your turn now. How do the keywords help you as a reader? Well, how? Remember, it's important, pay attention to this word, right? That's how it helps you. Another text feature that we talked about was the index. Remember we showed you this index right here. How does the index help you? Talked about it this week. Did you get it? Did you remember? Remember the index, if you have something that you specifically want to know about, like remember we wanted to learn about the Velociraptor's eyes. So we checked the index and we were able to go right to the page about eyes. So an index helps you learn more about something that you're specifically wondering about. So that's how an index helps us. All right, the next key feature, or the next text feature on our list is table of contents. I know you know what a table of contents is. I mean, I can show you a table of contents, but you know what a table of contents is. You're first graders, right? There's our table of contents right there. That's a text feature. How, how does the text feature, how does the table of contents help us as readers? Go ahead and answer. So what'd you come up with? I mean, here, you've got a text feature here. Lots of books have text features. How does it help? 
Great, it kind of tells us what the book is about. It gets our mind ready to read because we can kind of be thinking, oh, this is the stuff that this book is gonna talk about, right? So that's a really helpful text feature. It's kind of a good thing to read and get our brains ready for learning that information. All right, next text feature we wanna talk about. Ooh, I know we talked about this one this week. Captions, I will point to a caption, but I want you to remind yourself why is a caption important? How does it help us as a reader? So remember that was a caption right there. So how does a caption help us as a reader? Right, because it describes the picture. If I was just to look at this picture, I might not know what it's totally telling me. Like, why is this showing me a picture of a desert? Like, what, is that, what does that have to do with velociraptors? Unless I read the caption and it tells me that they lived in a, the Gobi Desert, what used to be the Gobi, or what was the Gobi Desert. So that really helps me. So pick captions help describe the pictures, which helps me learn more information. Last thing we're going to talk about is a diagram. Do you remember a diagram? Hopefully, last time you watched a video, you drew your very own diagram. Do you remember? This book did not have a diagram, but the book we read last week, Throw Your Truth on the Roof, did have a diagram. How does a diagram help you as a reader? Go ahead and answer. Right? Because it tells us, it gives us a detailed picture. It's like a picture that teaches and it tells us the parts of something. Another cool thing that a diagram often does, it kind of shows us like the inside of something, right? Like that's not what a tooth looks like, right? We can't see the inside, but it's showing us the inside because the diagram shows us all the parts of something. So that's a really cool thing that diagrams do to help us learn information. So all of these text features are super helpful. Now, a book might not have all of them, and that's okay, right? But it's good when a book has it to pay attention to it and so you can learn more information. Because remember, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to learn information from text features. So I wanted to kind of look at two different books and kind of talk about how they're the same and how they're different. Because of course, we know that that's another thing good readers do is they make connections between books. So we read Velociraptor earlier, not with me. I think probably when you were still in school, you've read this book. Dinosaur Babies. So these are both nonfiction books, though they even kind of look the same, right? The dinosaur in front looks pretty sil kind of similar. So I want to talk about these two books, and I want to talk about how they are the same and how they are different. So remember, this book was about dinosaur babies, and this book was about velociraptors. This book if you remember, told us about lots of different types of dinosaurs. We can go just to the beginning, right? And we can see it's showing us different types of babies. And this one is just about velociraptors, but it's telling us a lot about velociraptors, where this one is telling us a little less, just about the babies of lots of different dinosaurs. But of course, it's the same, and that they both talk about dinosaurs and they're both nonfiction teaching books and they both have some really great illustrations. Let's also, let's go on a text feature hunt. So what I have here is I have this book, of course, that we've read this week. And I have this book that you've read probably uh, a while ago. This book that we read last week. If you watched the video with me, we've read this book and we've also read this book. We are going to go on a text feature scavenger hunt. If you would like, you can go ahead and find your own nonfiction book. If you've got one handy, go ahead and see if you can find your own nonfiction uh, book. And we're gonna go on a text feature scavenger hunt together, seeing what we can find. So I'm gonna give you just real quick to go get a nonfiction book. If you can't find one, that's fine. I have lots here that we can use together. All right, all right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let's see, let's see which books have a glossary. Well, I know glossary is at the beginning or the front of the book, or beginning or the end of the book, where is it? End, let's see, Birds by Suzanne Slade, illustrated by Kristen Kest. Does it have a glossary? 
looking in the back. It has a glossary. All right, chameleons are cool. Looking in the back for chameleons are cool. Oh, here's that. No glossary, no glossary. All right, what's your prediction? Ooh, we've read this one. Does this one have a glossary? What do you think? Let's see, let's look in the back. Nope, no glossary. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, how about dinosaur babies? Let's see, glossary, looking in the back. No glossary. All right, next text feature, keywords. Hmm, remember what keywords are? Those are those words in bold. Let's see, I'm just skimming through, seeing if I can, the nice thing about a keyword is you know it's there because it kind of pops out at you, right? Because they make it in bold because it's like, this word is important, pay attention to this word. Let's see, so I'm just kind of looking for those words that jump out at me. Hmm. And if you have a nonfiction book, you can be kind of looking through too to see if you have any keywords in your book. No, none of these books have keywords, but they are definitely something that a lot of nonfiction books have. And those, those words in bold that tell me, hey, this word's important, pay attention. All right, index. Well, we know this book has an index. Let's see, does Chameleons by Martin Jenkins, illustrated by Sue Shields. Index, we know index is in the back, so that's easy to find. No index in this book. Let's see, Dinosaur Babies by Lucille Reck Penner, illustrated by Peter Barrett. Nope, no index, birds. There's the back, remember? Index, so it tells us specific things about birds that we can go back and discover. All right, table of contents. Where do we go for the table of contents? Anybody remember? The beginning, let's check the beginning. Look at that beautiful table of contents right there. Remember, if you have a book with you, if you have a book handy, see if your book has a table of contents. Mm. No table of contents in this book. All right, let's go to the next one, captions. So if you have a book handy, start looking through your book, see if your book has captions. Well, we know this one has captions. I think I remember chameleons having captions. Let's see. Hmm, no, I, oh wait, there we go. Not every picture had a caption, but this one had little words that described this picture. So yep, we've got captions. All right, and diagrams. We know that a great diagram is this in this book right here. And you know what? I was just skimming through. This book actually has a twofer. It has two diagrams. So there is another diagram. What did you find in your books? Did you get to go on a text feature scavenger hunt? If you did not have a book with you now, that is totally okay. You can always go after this video and see if you can go on your own text feature scavenger hunt to see which of these you can find in your books. So we're wrapping up the lesson. You know I'm gonna be telling you to do your 15 minutes of independent reading of a nonfiction book if you've got one, but a fiction one will work as well. And then we are going to do a journal entry about text features. So here is the sheet that you might have printed out and it says write about what you learned from a text feature in your book. And then I listed all of the text features that are here. So you have a list on them. So if you're going on a scavenger hunt for our text features, here's a great place to go to find that list of them. So glossary, table of contents, keywords, captions, index, and diagrams. So I went ahead and completed this about velociraptors and I picked one key feature that I wanted to write about, which is what you'll need to do. So I, write, I, I did write about what you learned from a text feature in your book. So I wrote, I read Velociraptors. The text feature that helped me were the captions. They helped me learn about the pictures. So there you go. That is your written work, your journaling that you need to be doing after your 15 minutes of independent reading. This has been so great. I have, I can't believe, look at all these books that we've gotten to read together. It's been such a great thing. Thank you so much, first graders, for just being generally spectacular. I think you're awesome. Take care, have fun. And know that all of our, all the teachers out there really miss you and are looking forward to seeing you again. Bye.